morning, Catherine, and thank you so much for talking with us here at SAF TV. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, considering your experience with uh, small businesses, what are the most common pitfalls? I'd say a common pitfall for small businesses is that they have a tendency, especially if they're a creative business, which lots of product businesses are, lots of product businesses and retailers, they think that as creative businesses, they maybe don't have to engage as much with the key business numbers in their business. Perhaps they work with an accountant, which is fantastic, and a, a great small business accountant is a wonderful asset for a small business to have. But even if you work with an accountant, you should always, as the business owner, take responsibility for knowing your key numbers, whether that's your profit level, uh, your profit margins, and particularly things like your stock levels, which are really important. Do you tackle them in your book, Tame Your Tiger? So Tame Your Tiger, How to Stop Your Product Business Eating You Alive, is all about those key business numbers that you need to keep your eye on as a small business owner or as any business owner. So yes, we look at things like how to measure your profitability, how to understand your break-even point and how to understand how much stock that you have. And you have people reaching out to you to help them with their businesses? Yeah, I've been working with small and independent retailers and brands for five years now and I've worked with hundreds of them either one-to-one -one or through my membership group, the Resilient Retail Club. And everything that I do with them is all about helping them feel more confident and in control of their business by understanding what the key things that are that they should be keeping an eye on. What should be a priority for small businesses in challenging economic times? When times are challenging economically, there's a few key things for small business owners to think about. First thing is that the closer you are to your customer, the closer you are to understanding what they want, and not just what they want in general, but what they want right now, then the better things will go for you. So it's very tempting when times are tough to think that nobody's buying, but it's not true. People still want to buy. They definitely still want to buy from independent businesses. And so you have a duty as a business owner to keep focusing on those customers and keep showing them new and exciting products. And then I think the other key thing for small business owners during economic difficulties is to try and stay as nimble as possible. So that means don't overload yourself on stock, don't have a lot of unproductive stock that is eating up all of your cash reserves. You want to be as cash rich as possible to help you stay resilient during difficult times. In terms of suppliers, um, do you also advise for suppliers to be closer to the business because small businesses have more agility in that sense, don't they? Yes, absolutely, for sure. The more that suppliers can really tune into what the retailers' customers want, the more they can really tailor their range to be exactly what people want in 2023 and the more sales they'll make. Any last advice for small businesses who attend our shows? Keep thinking about what your customer wants. Keep looking for the new exciting products. Don't feel like you should stick to the same safe formula. Take a few risks, try a new, few new things. And don't forget that if you can find the products that they absolutely have to have, those emotional must-haves, then people will keep buying even during tough times. How do you keep in touch with the evolution of the customer? I keep talking to them, especially if you see them face to face, then Keep asking them what they're doing, what they're thinking about, what occasions they're buying for. Keep watching the sales data, so looking at what they're buying. But then also identify your best customers and maybe invite them for a coffee, have a chat. Maybe you offer them a gift voucher or something as an incentive. Have a frank conversation about what they like, about what you offer and what they'd love to see differently. And it just all helps feed your decision making process. Thank you so much, Catherine, for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us.